Hello, this is your Algerian teacher and welcome to Grow the Branches channel. Today we are going to start a new series on tenses in English. Today's video will be the first one in our series and it will deal with time, tense and then aspect. After several years of teaching English, I have noticed that most learners make mistakes in tenses mainly because they often confuse between time and tense. Before we start, let's read these sentences. I have read that book already. They have lived in New Zealand for 20 years. These verbs have read and have lived are in the present perfect tense. We shall see this tense in another video. For today's video, it doesn't matter how tenses are called. But look carefully. You have the word present. I have a question for you. Do these verbs express the present time or do they express the past time? Pause the video, write your answer on a piece of paper and check your answer at the end of this video. If you really want to master tenses in English, you need to understand the difference between both time and tense before starting learning tenses or aspect. Learning how to use verbs correctly involves more than looking up their meanings in a dictionary. You must also understand how the form of a verb affects its meaning. If you put a verb, for example, in the present tense, it doesn't always mean that you are expressing an action that is happening at the present time. And this is why a clear distinction should be made between tense and time. The notion of time or present time, past time, future time is universal and independent of any particular language or of any language at all. Tense, on the other hand, is a linguistic concept varying from language to language. It means the verb form or forms used to express certain time relations. That is, when you want to express present, past or future time, you need to select the right grammatical form of the verb, tense, to be able to express your idea without any misunderstanding. Time is universal and tense is the way you conjugate verbs in a language when speaking. In order to make this clearer, let's see these examples. We feed our cat and fish. The verb feed is in the simple present tense, but the sentence doesn't mean that the action of feeding takes place only in the present. We fed our cat in the past and we shall feed it in the future. This sentence doesn't indicate present time, but it indicates a fact, a statement from the past to the present to the future time. So the simple present tense can express actions taking place in the present, the past and or the future time. As you can see, simple present tense doesn't necessarily express an action taking place in the present time, nor does a simple past tense necessarily express an action taking place in the past time. Here are two other sentences. If I trusted him, I would lend him the money. It is time I went home. In both these sentences, B and C, the verbs trusted and went have a past tense form, but do they indicate a past time? Sentence B, if I trusted him, implies if I trust him, that is to say it expresses the present time. And though went in sentence C is the tense form, the time of going home It must surely be the future time. Now, why is this? It is important to note two points. Tenses are not just time, and time is not the only concept expressed by the tense of a verb. Tense may also indicate the completeness or incompleteness of an action, whether it is or was still continuing, expressed by simple and continuous tenses or whether it took place within a time that began in the past but extends to and includes the present or the future, expressed by perfect tense. If you want to express the present time, for example, you need to know which tense and verb forms are more suitable. In fact, if you want to learn tenses, you need to understand how English tenses are used and for what purposes. In order to make tenses in English, we need time, parts, present and future, and we need aspect, simple, perfect or continuous. So, we have the following verb forms, past simple, past perfect, past continuous, past perfect continuous, then present simple, present perfect, and so on. For the future, it is the same thing. In order to make tenses in English, we need time and aspect. English tenses are not times. Tenses are made of time and aspect. Now that we have understood that time can be expressed in different tenses, so from now on, do not think in terms of time, but in terms of tenses. And to achieve this objective, you need to think in terms of aspects and what they mean. Only after understanding what each of these aspects expresses that you can put the verbs in the right tense. Here is a tip to learn English tenses. Do not ask first which time I want to use, but instead ask yourself first which aspect I should use. The simple, the perfect, the continuous, or the perfect continuous. The fault is a combination between the perfect and continuous.
and then think about time. Only then you will learn the tenses. As you can see, tenses in English have two parts, time and aspect, and that is for a reason. You cannot think only about time and forget the aspect, neither can you think only of aspect and forget time. But here is what you need to do. Think first of the aspect, then of the time, and you will have it right. What is aspect? And what is the difference between simple, perfect and continuous aspect? The distinction is very easy. Aspect tells us whether a verbal action is completed, continuing or lasting from one point in time to another. Simple tenses can be past. Simple past and its form is verb plus ed or present. Simple present. Its form is the verb in the infinitive or we add an s for third singular subjects or future. Simple future and the form is shall or will plus the verb in the infinitive form. Simple tenses have several uses which are not limited to indicating specific times. They can express facts, habitual actions, timeless, also zero time actions and completed actions. For example, the sun rises in the east. Here we have used rises in the present not because we want to express the present time, but to report the general fact. We are ready. It indicates a current state. I always write with a special pen when I sign my name. The verb is used to indicate habitual facts or action. He traveled to the Philippines. It refers to completed action. I will call you tonight. The verb is used to promise or predict to complete an action in the future. The continuous, also called the progressive aspect, expresses duration. The form be in the past, present or future plus the verb in the ing form. Progressive tenses indicate that actions or events are repetitive ongoing which means progressing or temporary. The continuous aspect focuses on the duration of an event. It expresses that the action was, is or will be in progress at a specific point in time or over a period of time. Examples of the continuous aspect. Are you enjoying yourself? Here the verb are enjoying doesn't ask about life in general, but it asks about now at the moment of speaking. Remember, we use the continuous aspect when speaking about an action taking place at a particular point in time. At 9 o'clock I was sitting on the train. What does it mean? During 9 o'clock I was sitting. Duration and ongoing of the action at 9 o'clock. When I came home he was sleeping. Was well, sleeping is an action that was happening at the time of coming back home. She must be waiting for me. It means at the moment of speaking, now she is waiting. Here, we express ongoing duration of an action. Another example, Rob was hiking all day yesterday. What does it mean? During all day yesterday, from beginning to end, the action was ongoing, was in progression. The action was taking place during all that time. While she was reading, Bill was working on the computer. One action taking place during all the time of another action. In January, I'll be living at my brother's. Here, from the beginning of the month to the end of January, the action will be taking place. The action will happen not one day, but the whole month. As you have seen, the continuous aspect is used to express that an action is still progressing and incomplete at some point in time. The perfect tenses form is having the past, present or future plus the past participle verb plus ed. The perfect aspect expresses completion. Perfect tenses indicate actions that were performed or events that occurred before a particular time. The perfect aspect relates to times, from past to pre-past, present to pre-present, future to post-future. In other words, they start at a time but end in another. Examples of the perfect aspect. I've lived here for 10 years. It means from 10 years ago until now. By 5 o'clock he had finished the letter. He had started writing the letter at some time before 5 o'clock and finished at 5 o'clock. When I arrived, they had already left. It means they left at some time before I arrived. It links between two times. Have you seen my new bike? At any time before up to now. I will have done the ironing by the time you get home. It relates time between now and when you get home in the future. We can summarize the aspects as follows. Use the simple tenses for completed actions, timeless actions and facts. Use the continuous to express progression or ongoing during some point in time. And use the perfect tenses when you want to emphasize that action starts at one point in time and finishes in another. Perfect continuous tenses. The form is had, have, will, have, plus being, plus verb in the ing form. 
The perfect continuous is not considered as an aspect in itself. It is rather a combination of the perfect and continuous aspects. The perfect continuous expresses that the action had, has or will have been in progress for some time at a specific point in time. Examples of the perfect continuous. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. The action started from when I was born until now. Duration. He's been ironing his shirts from some time and in the past until now. By 2005, George had been living in Scotland for 20 years. So if we count the 20 years from 1985 to 2005. When Mary gets home, Kevin will have been sleeping for hours. Kevin's sleep lasts him for some point in time before Mary gets home and until she gets home. As you have seen, the perfect continuous aspect is a combination of the perfect and continuous aspects. But you need to know that if this makes you confused, just use the perfect aspect instead. Nowadays, speakers of English are less and less using the perfect continuous tenses and they use the perfect tenses instead. The following table summarizes all the forms of the English tenses that we are going to see one by one in the coming videos of the tenses series. You can find a downloadable link of this table in the description box below. If you remember the first two sentences at the beginning of the video, I have already read that book and I have lived in New Zealand for 20 years. The use of the present perfect tense does not express the present time, but they express an action starting in the past and finishing in another time, either in the present for the first sentence or in the future for the second sentence. Now we come to the end of this video. I hope you will find it helpful to make the difference between time, tense and aspect. Thank you for watching.